More crocodiles are making their way into central Florida. This thing was just so much scarier looking than gators. Some folks are uneasy about their new neighbors. Jaws and claws. Ancient predators with jaws powerful enough to crush bone lurk silently in the shadow of nuclear power plants. Their population is decimated, pushed to the edge of extinction. Now they're staging a comeback in the most unexpected place on Earth. In this video, we uncover the shocking relationship between atomic energy and some prehistoric killers that scientists never anticipated, and the collision course that may be inevitable as two worlds collide. What happens when America's deadliest reptile finds sanctuary beside technology that can power a million homes? And as their numbers grow, what happens when these apex predators begin to reclaim territories now occupied by humans? Imagine walking along a Florida beach at dusk. The sun is setting, casting long shadows across the sand. Suddenly, you spot movement in the water, an American crocodile. With a bite force exceeding 3,700 pounds per square inch, these prehistoric titans can crush a turtle shell like it's made of paper. One wrong move and you could become another statistic. While many tourists and even locals mistake them for alligators, these are entirely different beasts. Crocodiles are typically more aggressive, more powerful, and far more rare. They have narrower, more V-shaped snouts, visible teeth when their mouths are closed, and a distinctive pale grayish-green color that helps them disappear in brackish waters. South Florida represents the northernmost extent of their range, the only place in the United States where these creatures exist naturally. It's also the only place on Earth where crocodiles and alligators share territory, a fact that puts anyone venturing into these waters at double risk. But by the mid-1970s, these ancient predators were circling the drain of extinction. Their population had crashed from thousands to fewer than 300 individuals. Their coastal habitat was being destroyed at an alarming rate to make way for beachfront condos, marinas, and the endless expansion of human development. As their world crumbled around them, these survivors of 200 million years of evolution faced a grim future, until fate intervened in the most unlikely place imaginable. Could the survival of America's most endangered reptiles depend on one of our most controversial energy sources? The answer might shock you. This is Turkey Point Nuclear Plant, just 25 miles south of Miami. What makes this facility unique isn't just the uranium being split inside its massive concrete reactors, it's what surrounds them. 168 miles of man-made canals spread across 6,800 acres, a waterway system so vast it's visible from space creating an accidental sanctuary for creatures that have roamed Earth since the time of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Many people assume these waters are radioactive, which is completely false. The cooling canals simply absorb heat from the plant systems. The water never comes into contact with any radioactive materials. It's much like a car radiator, taking heat away from the core systems. The water that flows through Turkey Point's sprawling network of canals is typically 5 to 10 degrees warmer than surrounding waters. For cold-blooded reptiles that depend on external heat sources to regulate their body temperature, it's the perfect environment, especially during Florida's occasional cold snaps that can be lethal to reptiles. But temperature is only part of this mysterious relationship. To understand why these ancient predators thrive here, we need to examine the scientific research and what it tells us about what happens as their numbers grow. As darkness falls over the cooling canals, the real work begins. Wildlife biologists have dedicated their careers to studying these creatures, and their research involves high-stakes nighttime expeditions. The glowing red eyes visible in the darkness belong to some of the most efficient killing machines on the planet. Researchers face these creatures armed with nothing but catch poles and their extensive knowledge of crocodilian behavior. Despite their fearsome reputation, crocodiles are incredibly complex creatures. Their intelligence rivals that of many mammals. They're capable of learning, problem-solving, and possessing credible spatial memory. They remember every detail of their territory, including where they've encountered humans before. Every capture attempt is a dangerous dance. One false move could trigger a defensive response from a protective mother lurking nearby. A female crocodile can weigh up to 400 pounds and move at speeds of 20 miles per hour in short bursts, faster than an Olympic sprinter. But the risk is worth it. Each hatchling represents hope for a species that was nearly wiped off the map and vital data for understanding a population that's growing larger every year. In the early days of crocodile research at Turkey Point, scientists would be lucky to find 10 to 15 nests per year. 
Now they document over 30 nests annually just in the cooling canals. That's explosive growth for a large predator species. And with that growth comes an uncomfortable question. What happens when the canals can no longer contain them all? The answer starts back at research facilities, where each tiny predator reveals in secrets under the careful hands of scientists who understand they are handling the future apex predators of Florida's waterways. Since the monitoring program began in 1978, researchers have tagged over 10,000 individual crocodiles. It's one of the most comprehensive studies of any reptile on Earth. Every measurement, every sample tells scientists something about their health, growth rates, and behaviors. The data has revealed something astonishing and potentially alarming. These nuclear refugees aren't staying put. Tracking data shows crocodiles that hatched at Turkey Point appearing as far away as Tampa. That's over 200 miles. They're reclaiming territory they haven't occupied in decades. And more concerning, they're showing up in places with high human activity. The Turkey Point population has become a nursery, producing more crocodiles than the immediate area can support. The inevitable result? Young adults strike out to establish new territories, often in areas now occupied by waterfront homes and businesses. With each passing year, human crocodile encounters are increasing. While American crocodiles have historically been less aggressive toward humans than their Nile or saltwater cousins, wildlife officials recorded 27 significant encounters in 2024 alone, triple the number from just five years earlier. To see something like that was, I'm hoping not a once in a lifetime. It was a crocodile. So it was an amazing sight. I've lived here my whole life, 47 years, never seen a crocodile. But the most crucial discovery was what made Turkey Point perfect for crocodile nesting and why this success story could be putting humans on a collision course with these prehistoric predators. The cooling canal system provides three essential elements, abundant food, elevated nesting areas safe from flooding, and most importantly, protection from humans. That combination is increasingly rare in developed parts of Florida. As these crocodiles spread out from their nuclear sanctuary, they're entering a world vastly different from the one their ancestors knew a world of boat docks, swimming pools, and waterfront patios where humans never expect to encounter a prehistoric predator. In Miami-Dade County, reports of crocodiles in residential canals have increased by 65 percent since 2020. Wildlife officials now respond to nearly 200 crocodile calls annually in areas where they were virtually unseen a decade ago. Most of these animals are juveniles looking to establish territory. They're following instincts that evolved long before humans built waterfront homes. The problem is, almost every prime piece of crocodile habitat now has people living on it. From the brink of extinction to a thriving population, nature finds a way, even in the shadow of our most advanced technology. But as these ancient predators multiply and spread, one question remains. Can humans and crocodiles find a way to share paradise, or are we on a collision course that neither side can avoid?